everyone. Welcome to the Zentangle Project Pack series. Today we are working on a video that is a part of our Apprentice Project Pack series. Zentangle Apprentice is part of the Zentangle family that focuses on designing products and lessons catered to a younger audience. However, we believe that we all have a child inside us, which makes all of these videos great for tanglers of all ages. We'll be working with the materials found in our Apprentice Project Pack envelopes. Project packs are available from certified Zentangle teachers and from Zentangle.com. If you do not have a project pack, we always encourage you to follow along with whatever materials you do have. These lessons can be accommodated with other pens and pencils that you might have at home. All right, you guys ready to go? Yeah. All right, so I have a couple of friends here tangling along with me. Um, I'd like to introduce them quickly, um, but they are wonderful artists that um, are very close to our Zentangle community. So I have Alex, Andy, Mazzy, Gwen, Charlie, Abby, and I am Molly. And today we're going to be working with um, 3Z tiles. And 3Z tiles um, look a little bit like this. They are little triangles. And they're kind of fun to work with because once you tangle on them and you tangle on a, some of them or multiples of them, you can get some really cool effects by um, putting the triangles together and creating kind of like tiled creations. And so today I'm going to be doing um, a sort of a uh, style of tangling that um, somebody, one of our CZTs came up with a couple of years ago that we call plates. And that might make a little more sense once we're all done. So the girls here are working with me and they have all chosen one pen to work with. Um, they, some of them have chosen a color pen and they're going to stick with the same pen the whole time. And then a few of us have um, our black pens. So right now, really what you need to do is just pick one pen. Any color will work. Um, I think the only one we thought didn't work that great on the white was the yellow. That one was like a, not as drastic of a difference with the color. But all the other colors look great, and um, I think we all have chosen our pen, so we're good to go. And you're also going to need your pencil to start with, so are we ready to go? <laughs> all right, so we have our 3Z tiles in front of us, we have our pen chosen, and we have our pencil chosen. And what I like to do before I start tangling is first, of course, get all my materials ready. But once I have my material ready, I, I usually try to get my body ready. I try to get comfortable in the seat I'm in. And then I like to, to allow a moment for what we call gratitude and appreciation. And that is the first step in the Zentangle method. And it doesn't need to be a long pause or a long time that you spend on this step, but even just a moment of maybe putting down your pen, taking a deep breath, and just let yourself focus on something that you're grateful for in your world. It could be something really small, like the new pen you have. It could be something really big, like some family member or friend or somebody that you love. It could be you had a nice walk today, or maybe you enjoyed um, a conversation you had. Whatever it is, just take a moment for that. I'm feeling very grateful to have um, these people with me to tangle because I enjoy tangling with people. It's kind of, um, it's fun. So I'm, I'm very grateful that they were able to get here today. And I'm grateful that um, they are a part of our Zentangle community. So that's kind of fun. So we're gonna get started. We're gonna start with these three Z tiles and my graphite pencil. This is the pencil that's black. And I'm gonna put my three Z tile in front of me like this. So it's kind of pointing at myself and I'm going to look at just one side here and I'm just going to simply kind of guess where halfway is and this is just a guess and I'm going to put like just a little mark there so just a little mark and I'm going to go on this side over here and I'm going to guess where halfway is on that side too just a guess it doesn't have to be exact okay now I'm going to go back to this first side and I'm going to guess where halfway between this mark and this side is so about halfway between there. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over here. So you should have three marks on that side. And then I'm gonna go on here and I'm gonna guess where about halfway between there and there is. And then once again over here. 
So it's just a guess. It doesn't have to be perfect. And in fact, I think it can be like a little bit wonky. It doesn't really need to be perfect. And then we're gonna, I like to turn my towel just a little bit and I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do first and then I'll have you all follow along. So I'm gonna look at these where they kind of match up. And I'm gonna just make a little like arc that connects each one. You have like a rainbow of sorts. Okay, so we all have our strings here and I want you to know these don't need to be perfect because we're kind of just setting up an, our spaces to draw on. So they don't have to be, we kind of put our halfway marks there just as a reference point. So don't worry about them being exact. And if we wanted them to be exact, we would have done rulers and all that stuff, but we want these to have character. So let's, uh, let's go with it. So I, I have my black pen here and the girls, some of them have gel pens and all different pens. So we're going to be starting at the bottom here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to trace over this first string line with my pen. And then I'm going to draw a line that or is it right next to it? So you kind of have a really thin line. Then I'm going to do the second one the same way. I'm going to trace over it and then do a really thin aura right below it. Just taking your time. Doesn't need to be perfect. Beautiful. And I'm going to go up and do the top one. And then just an aura right below that. All right, so now we're going to focus in this, um, this spot right down in the middle here. And I'm actually going to, um, I'm going to divide this space in half too, because I think I can put two different tangles there. So I'm going to add an arc right here. So that space gets kind of divided in half. And right at the bottom, we're going to start with something pretty basic. We're just going to do a series of lines that kind of um, go a little bit like this. So you can watch me. I'm going to start right in the middle and I'm going to go to the point. And then I'm going to work my way to one side, but I'm always ending in the point. So I'm kind of cutting like pie slices out. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. So I'm always ending in the exact same place. Beautiful. So that's kind of a nice way to start off. It's just nice and simple. All right, so in the next space, we are gonna do sort of like a, a variation of crescent moon. And what's great about these plates is you can really put any tangles. Once you pick a space, you can kind of do any tangles. So we're gonna do a big ladybug shape right here in the middle, kind of like that. And then we're going to ink it in. <laughs> and I'm gonna put just a nice, simple, just one aura around our crescent moon. And sort of like we did here with that look like kind of rays, I'm going to do the same thing on this one, but we're going to move a, a little bit more like a sun. So I'm going to start with one in the middle, kind of like this, and I, I double lined it. I made it a little thicker. And then I'm just going to work my way. Each one I'm doing kind of like a double line to make it a little thicker. And this one I'm doing more like rays of a sun. I'm kind of working my way around the shape. Till I get to the end there. Something like that. That one's kind of fun. Oh, great job, you guys. These look great. Rock stars. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we oh, have- Something dropped out of the yeah, chair, I like think. a bead on the oh, floor. No, no you not... did. Your chair is falling apart. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have two sections left, but I kind of want to show you more than two more tangles. So I think I'm actually going to divide this one in half too. So we're going to sort of eyeball dividing this one in half. And again, they don't have to be perfect. 
And I like to put a double line in, so something like that. So in this first one, I am going to put Printom, which is our spirals, right? And we have two different options. You can fill it with tiny little spirals that are kind of random, or if you wanted to do one big spiral after another that fit, filled the space, you can do either one. I think I'm gonna do kind of tinier spirals that are kind of more random. Once you get like sorry to your rhythm with this tangle, you can kind of start to explore different variations. And these spaces are not too big, so it kind of goes pretty fast. Oh, there we go. This is a nice kind of changes it up there. Perfect. It looks like we all kind of did it a different way, which is nice. So in this next space right here, I am going to do a variation on the tangled perk. And perk is really just all about orbs. Uh, and an orb is really a circle, but we like to say orb because it makes it feel like it doesn't have to be as, as perfect. So uh, for this one, I am going to start in the middle and I'm gonna draw a big orb. And I really want it to feel like it's stuck in between these two lines. So kind of want it to stretch and hit so it might even look like it's falling behind so it's kind of like just stuck right in the middle there oh great job you guys yes exactly I love this and then I'm going to just work on one side and I'm gonna add an orb right next to it but almost as if it's kind of smushed right next to it And then I'm going to keep going until I get to one side and mine might even like fall off the edge a little bit. Oh, these are great, you guys. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. They look like peas in a pod. Yes, exactly. Right. Sometimes when I draw it, I'm like, do they look like teeth? But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no. <laughs> And when I draw this tangle, I like to go back and sort of ink in that little bits of space in between because I think it makes the orbs kind of pop out a little bit more. So it's kind of interesting when you start to look at patterns and you can see how just really subtle details make the drawing look more unique and more thought out. So instead of just drawing the orbs, you know, completely isolated from each other. We kind of put them all in a way that almost looks like they're, there's tension and they're all smushed together and it can be, kind of creates a different illusion. Nice job, little highlights on there, I like that. All right, in this last space up here, um, I'm gonna do a tangle we call bales. I think we've, we've done this already in a previous video, so you guys can just follow along. This is a great tangle um, that you can add a bunch of different variations to, so I'll show you one way, and then um, we can very easily um, try some different ones. So the way I'm gonna lay out my grid, it's a little bit difficult because we have sort of an arc here, is I'm just gonna start by drawing a line straight down the center. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this into like two spaces. So just watch for a second. I'm going to look something like this. And it doesn't have to be perfect. So they kind of subtly go towards the center. And then I'll do two on this side too, dividing up my spaces. It's like something like that. And then I think to create my, yeah, that looks great, you guys. To create my grid, I'm just gonna divide mine in half. But if your space is different, you can do it differently, but I'm just gonna divide it in half. So fun. And so Bales is all about adding these sort of like arcs that begin and stop where we have these little intersections. So I'm gonna show you this. So I'm gonna go and draw two arcs that kind of make a shape something like that and looks like almost like a grain of rice or something and I'm going to do that on all of these lines going up and down and 
And if you like, you can put, it depends on how your grid laid out, you can put kind of half ones like that. So this looks actually really cool the way it is. So if you enjoy it and you want to leave it like that, you could obviously do that. I'm going to add my, my shapes going in the other direction. So I'm going to work my way all the way around this center part. And then I like to do these sort of half ones on the edges, but so just doing an arc going on one side. But depending on how you're lay, laid yours out, it might look a little different. Or it might look a lot different. <laughs> These look great, you guys. Oh, very cool. So we have these spaces left in the middle and if yours is big enough you can do what i'm about to do and if not you can leave it exactly the way it is so i'm going to add a di diagonal line through the center of these and i'm going to put one more kind of grain of rice shape going and i'm going to do that in every single one i'm going to alternate which one but you can do it however you like so basically i'm just putting first a diagonal line through the center and then doing that same grain of rice shape. What I like about a pattern with Zentangle is like, even if you start going in a different direction, I usually just say, keep going. Cause you can make a new pattern or explore something that's a little different. Almost done. Don't forget you can pause the camera if you're still working and you aren't quite. So some people when they do bales, they like to ink in these little spaces behind so it makes their tangle kind of pop out. So that's bales. Oh, you guys did a beautiful job. So I think what I'm gonna add one more layer for my um, my top here on the top and I'm going to do sort of like almost like a variation of this where I'm going to do little tiny circles that are kind of smooshed up right at the top of my plate and you can either leave them uncolored in or you can put a little tiny dot inside of them this looks like a little caterpillar crawling along the top I love adding these little details at the end because they add so much to the the final kind of composition and it to me it could, looks more like a like a plate when you add something on the end like that but it's up to you you might be still lost in coloring in the background of your other pattern that's fine too just take your time Turn your tile. All right, so at this point in time, we have all our patterns in, but I usually encourage folks to go back in and sort of add little details here and there. Maybe you wanna add a little bit of ink here and there. Um, it's kind of up to you. You just kind of revisit all your patterns before we're gonna go in and shade. I sometimes like to just add little bits of ink that call this sometimes a little rounding in the in the corners just to make it a little more dramatic. How are you girls doing? Good. <laughs> They're so quiet. All right, so I think what would be cool is we should show everybody how your tiles look before they're shaded, and then we'll show them what they look like after they're shaded, just as like a before and after. So you guys wanna share your tiles, how we're doing here? Oops. Plus they're a little wet, so this gives us some time. Oh, these look fantabulous. 
So this is what I mean. So when you, you might have to create a few to get this, or maybe you're working with a friend. And we have Gwen. Don't forget your gel pens stay wet for a minute. And Mazzy. So these look kind of cool without the shading. And then we're gonna explore some shading and see how that works and how we see them different. Okay, we're going to add some shading to our plates now. And if you actually just really like the way your tile looks and you're like, I don't wanna really add shading, that's fine too. You could just um, check out what we're gonna do and then either decide to do it later or not. You could explore shading and then do the tile again later. So there's a lot of options. And I'm just kind of showing you one way to shade this. So we're gonna start down at the bottom here and I'm gonna put a real thin layer of graphite just right at the bottom there underneath our aura. And I'm going to just buff it out with a tortillon, just nice and soft. And then, yeah, you gotta make sure your pens are dry, especially with the gel pen. So if they're not dry yet, you're gonna have to wait a minute. And then we're gonna put another thin layer right there on the top. And then on this one, I think I might, I'm just putting a nice thin layer right here on the top and I might on this one do it on the bottom too. Nice thin. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with my orbs. Just a little bit of graphite at the top of the orbs. So the trick is to make sure your shading doesn't get color in the whole space. You just wanna put a little shadow at the top and a little shadow at the bottom. This is already making these come alive. And I'm gonna do the same. So we're really doing the same shading technique on each one of these. And then one on the bottom. I sometimes, with this bigger space, I put it down a little thicker. And then again, just sort of gently smoothing it out. So you have a nice shadow leaving that center unshaded. So you may have be looking at your plate and be like, I love the way that looks, I'm gonna leave it just as is, but I'm gonna add another step here and that is to use my white charcoal pencil. And I'm gonna add a little highlight in the middle of all these. So I'm just taking my white charcoal pencil, just using sort of it on the side and just putting a little highlight right in the middle. And I'm gonna do that in every section. Oh, it's really cool on the sun. So sort of going right in the middle there. It looks really cool on the spirals. Right? It looks like an actual highlight, yeah. And with these ones, I sometimes use a tortillon, but you can actually just use the actual pencil, like sort of almost going over the stroke with the pencil itself and sort of smoothing it in with the pencil. on the orbs too. A little subtle there, but you can still get that highlight there. And then I think I'm gonna do it here too. Start starting to add layers in our work and you get all kinds of dimension here and there. These look great, you guys. So I have all mine um, done. And right before I we put all these together, I'm going to put my initials on here somewhere. I'm going to choose a spot over here. And I invite you to do the same once you are comfortable with how your tile looks. 
These look so fun, you guys. Great work. So you can do this same concept and put different tangles in each one. You can try different things. So maybe try another one and put different ones and start to put them together and see what happens. All right, let's try to put these together. Indy, beautiful. Gwen, oh, these are awesome. We miss an Alex. Oh, did you just put more ink on there? <laughs> these look awesome. Look at these all together. Beautiful, beautiful, awesome. All right, you guys want to put your hands under the camera so they can see what what made these awesome. Yay! Thanks for joining us, guys. We'll see you later.